How's it going, guys? Uh, back to Hatton Strength YouTube for episode two of Lucas and Alex Front Porch, uh, where we talk shit and talk strongman. Um, what we do anyway is so just doing it on camera. Um, so it's beginning of 2024, and we thought it'd be cool to do a look back at uh, my year as far as training, competing, um, and just uh, do a year in review and we'll talk about what we're going to do this upcoming year, or what we hope to do this upcoming year. Yeah, um, I'm so excited about it, so I'm super happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, I'm tired. It's early. A little tired, a little early. Um, yeah, so I, I thought it'd be cool because uh, I, I post a lot of the comp highlights. Uh, I thought it'd be cool to start with stuff that people don't see as much. What I think was the most effective things we did in training this year, the things I'm most thankful that we did, yeah. and maybe the event groups that were like the biggest breakthroughs for us this year. Yeah, uh, I'll probably just let you start because I've been rambling. So yeah, sure. So uh, yeah. I think I think you and I both have three things, one of which overlaps. Uh, so I'll start with something that I know is not overlapping for you. Uh, really, for me, this is much more of like a coaching perspective. One of the one of the training highlights that I'm really happy about your training specifically is really just mastering your VFR in relation to squats and deadlifts, which VFR just stands for volume to fatigue ratio. Uh, you know, that's something that usually takes like two to three years for a coach to kind of figure out really well with, a, with an individual mm -hmm. especially an individual that is that doesn't suck you know what i mean the higher the level of the athlete the harder that understanding that is because like at the same time you know you have someone your size who ultimately because you're open all that that actually means is that we have to continuously put new muscle fibers on you that don't consist of mostly fat and get you stronger for the rest of your life ideally like that's all mm -hmm. that means. which in paper sounds really really easy but it can be one of the most hardest things to do because you could easily push someone like you over the edge yeah. too, too soon and they break and we see it all the time all throughout the sport it's just people break and sometimes it's not their fault sometimes it is but really mastering the vfr is kind of the thing to enable that to never happen and there are certain athletes kind of like shaw who've kind of mastered that themselves mm -hmm. or, to, thor, or thor to a degree um but like that for as a coach so in relation to you we basically have hit the nail on the head in the recipe that gets your squats and your deadlifts better whenever we want like yep. I pretty much know exactly the protocols that I'm going to use with you and you pretty much know them probably intuitively at this point mm -hmm. to elicit the growth that we need. And there's a few other things that we haven't used yet because we don't need to, but that's something that's hard to do with a guy your size and a guy that's already as strong as you. That's yeah. Really yeah. I, I still think you, uh, where you want to go in deadlifts is uh, too many fucking deadlifts, but <laughs> <laughs> I love, I love a lot of squats, uh, but you know, you're, you're definitely right. Um, because it seems like every time we re revisit it, uh, there's this, you know, multiple percentage point jump, which is kind of crazy at this level. And yeah, this, many years, this many years in, that's not normal. Yeah. Um, now, so we're three to five percent every time. Every time we dedicate do a dedicated look at the squat of the deadlift. Um, so, you know, when that stops, we'll have to really reassess. But yeah. until we hit that wall, we have we haven't hit that wall. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so my probably my favorite for the year um was stones i has i have lost shows on stones it kept me out of giants live um i just i've been a pretty okay stone loader like i can do singles but i can't i have historically been bad at runs um and you basically took the page out of trey mitchell's book oh, yeah. as is basically anybody who's good at stones uh we spent about two three months doing no tax stones and just doing extensions not loads and i hated every second of that Oh, um, so yeah, it was horrible. It's <laughs> horrible. Um, but yeah, I mean, that that kind of went from low 300s, no tack being near death reps to being ending that particular cycle with 400, no tack, and it was easy. Yeah. Um, and I think kind of the thing, I think I might have a, a clip of that one. Um, what do you think? Why do you think it was that translated so hard for you in, in a positive way? Why, why did it translate so hard to you? So I, I think, I mean, I was really good at singles, um, but I was really good at uh, <laughs> setting up my tacky for just singles <laughs> as I over relied on tacky. So as soon as tacky failed, which tacky would usually fail by the end of a stone series, yeah, I would fail. Um, and the other thing too, focusing on extensions as opposed to, um, as opposed to loads, like historically I trained all loads then we just focused on extensions. We switched for the most part that habit of going to the toes early. So I'm rising 
and heels are down, heels are down, heels are down. Then I rise into the knees, rise into the toes. Yeah, that changed everything, and that Please. extensions block changed it all. Yeah, and whereas before, you know, I think what a lot of people may not know in training stones without tack, like because you know you obviously see four hundred pounds here, it's that's a lot of weight. It's cool. You spent eight to ten weeks, nearly three months, first doing basically three hundred pounds to three thirty pounds and getting your shit pushed in. And mm -hmm. as someone who's as big as you, it, it, it sucks moving just three hundred pounds. You're like, what am I, a middleweight woman? You know what I mean? But what you'll find is that crushing power develops and the confidence in staying in your heels, like you mentioned, lasts. And like, and then you can see a really fantastic stone right here uh, as a as an example of it or as a result of it, I should say. Yeah, and and you know, it, it was a bummer that I had to pull out of OSG. Um, but I, I think this training session was kind of the full circle for the year on this concept of like, this was me running the OSG stone series. Uh, this kicked my ass last year. And then this series was fast enough to win the show last year by three seconds. Mind you, it's still training. It doesn't matter. You can't brag about training. Would it have won me, this year? I don't know. Um, I'd have to double check. I would imagine so. I don't remember going prior. incredibly fast, but it, I mean, that's nice to say. It doesn't really mean anything, but. This yeah, this stone run does mean a lot to me. Like, no, this is quantifiable progress in the year as a whole. Um, and and the so, here for people who might not know. Uh, so it, I mimicked OSG series. So three hundred to our top stone is four thirty in basically mm -hmm. twenty five pound jumps. Um, so I basically ran the OSG series uh, as my last training session and just smoked it. Um, yeah. So this this was just huge for me. Like. Um, if I, as far as like probably single videos, I'm most proud of for the year. This is one of the biggest ones. Yeah, man. Um, it was fantastic. It was a really great. I remember I wasn't in town. I was in North Carolina coaching Aaron and Gabby at, in at Lynn Morehouse's house. So I wasn't there for that. But I remember getting that video like, well, he's going to win the show. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And then we right. did. Uh, and so we didn't. Then we pulled out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. What was your what was your next one? My second one. Uh, really? You know, it might not seem that this was something that we focused on so hard for people on the outside, but the amount of work that we put in on your split jerk specifically was months, true, it was, true. It was near six months of actual just technique work where, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm, you, you know, this and people like Nez know it, whatever. I'm really annoying when it comes to like, if I'm in the room with you, especially like I'm going to make you do it right. Yeah. And like, keeping your back foot in that slight angle, landing the back foot first and stepping out a perfect 90 degree angle on the shin. Like all those things really mattered. And you put in a lot of time mm -hmm. and really the culmination of all that work was the easiest 200 kilo axle. Anyone at America ever. Are. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. It's like, yeah, you're right. I mean, I didn't really think of it that way, but like prior to this year, like every single time we do push press, push press versus split jerk, you're like your dip and drives are different. Yeah, and, and now that's, on, uh, that's yeah, honestly that's the biggest change for you, which I don't think most people would realize. But your dip and drive technique for your split jerk is completely different now. Yeah, I mean, because like on paper, maybe my my max overheads are pretty similar from beginning yeah. year to end of year. Log it definitely went up. Yes. Um, dumbbell it definitely went up. But like as far as like split jerk, uh, whether it's axle or out of the blocks, it, we haven't had a reason to max it. But I, I imagine, like, this next time we revisit it, it's it's going to blow up be, just because of that change. Um, you know, give me a reason, like 500s. I have no doubt that any day of the week, 500 is going up. Right. Um, and it's just because of that change, honestly. Um, you've gotten stronger and all that, too. But, yeah, no, you're probably right. That's That was a huge one for this year. So. Two. Huh? What's your number two? Of My number two. Um, the worst training we did all year. Um, but it paid off in Canada, the bus pull training that we did. Um, that was, oh, a yes. yeah, much like stones. That was an event that we trained kind of like man on a mission because at beer stone a year or two ago at this point, Please. I got dead last, um, got smoked by absolutely everybody. Yeah, and I was like, people you should have. <laughs> yeah. Dudes that should not beat me in a truck pole, beat me in a truck <laughs> pole. Um, so yeah, we did. We trained it a lot. Uh, I assume you don't want me to show. No. <laughs> no. Okay. So I'm going to show the church bus video. Yeah, you'll show that. <laughs> we did. We did some other cool stuff to train. Yeah, not to be dicks, but ultimately Lucas and I came up with a training concept that we've never seen anyone else do, and we're not going to share that. Um, but essentially, just combines different modalities of training. It was great. Yes. It worked really well. And this was the end result here. 
Yeah. So um, what was cool is we spent most of the block um, not pulling big buses and stuff. I think and we then did when it, it came twice, two, three twice, times? two twice. sessions with Braden's church bus. Yeah. Um, sh- it, shall be, it shall be missed. Um, but we pulled the church bus and uh, this was the s- first session we got out on the bus and I was it's still cool. wearing hiking boots at this point. Yeah. Uh, and this was sloppy. I remember this session really hurt and I was like, shit, maybe, maybe all that stuff that we did didn't really work all that well. Mm-hmm. And then uh, the final session we got into climbing shoes and I got, you know, just more reps actually on the rope. Right. And I was like, okay, this is a different event. And also anybody watching, if you're doing truck pole without climbing shoes, uh, stop that because <laughs> climbing shoes literally make it a different event. It's um, entirely different. Entirely different event. And when it came time to come to Canada uh, with that, pulling that semi up in North America's uh, would beat everyone by nine seconds. Um, yeah. It, it just, it wasn't even close. Um, and it, it could have been heavier. It could have been up at like, it didn't matter. Like, I think we went from being, uh, not being good at tr- being actually horrible at truck bowl to being like, I'm not worried about anybody on the planet on that event. Like no, I'm not always going to win it, but like, I think I can hang with anybody. Yeah. That event. Uh, and it really kind of just came down to that weird training concept that I sound like a douche for not talking about, but <laughs> Um, but no, it really in your technique, ultimately your technique that the shoes kind of allow you to get into with that near perfect parallel position to the body, to the floor rather. I just watched actually you do it 20 minutes ago. I was watching the North American um, Championships, which is on JF Cron's mm-hmm. uh, YouTube channel for those that want to watch. And I watched the bus pull before this and like you were the only guy that would, could have kissed the floor the whole yeah. time. Yeah, my angles are completely different than everybody else. And you see that shit even at like Worlds. It blows my mind. That's a weird one that like everyone watches everyone else do bus pull yeah. and i think i think everyone does it wrong <laughs> yeah. they do it right for like four steps and then they're like i'm gonna stand up now I'm like yeah, no don't do that. no don't do that <laughs> or they feel like they're staying down but for by our standards they're standing up right um yeah I mean, so that was matus do it really well mm-hmm. and there's a few other cats that have done it but like it's not common like a lot of guys kind of stay upright mm-hmm. it's weird man so what did uh, you said you had a third one? And the third one was just stone. So it was our shared one. Sure. Um, I really liked the North America's log peak. I don't. We don't really need to get into oh, yeah. it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, this I whole mean, it's gonna be a cock tease of things we won't be talking about. <laughs> I mean, we just did a ton of log, like because like weirdly yeah. enough, just with uh, how my career's progressed and the shows we've had, I hadn't had a max log since like that amateur nationals a few years ago. Right. Um, we hadn't had a reason to push log at all and anything. So really uh, I was walking around with a 445 axle and a damn near 300 pound dumbbell. Right. And people are like, what's your log backs? So I'm like 365. <laughs> Cause I, I never had a reason, right? Like, yeah. so, I mean, at first we were hoping that I would get into North America's. So we were just kind of teasing the log and then we got in. So we really spent probably 12 to 16 weeks just pushing the log and yeah. It got 440 to tie tie with Trey. And who was the other one that had the record on that log? The person that had the record uh, was Rajakowski. Yeah. Sick dude to share a record with. Yeah, no big deal. Sharing, <laughs> yeah, so for those that don't know, they use a very specific log at North American Championships, which was the same log used for uh, Circuit to Home Forts, which was a qualifying show for the Arnold Pro for many, many years. So guys like Thor, Brian Shaw, Rajakowski, J.F. Cron, all those big names, Martins Lises, have all used that exact log. And the most anyone has ever done is 440. And you matched Rajakowski, so did Trey Mitchell. And uh, you failed the clean on the next one, which I think was... <laughs> Was it? Four? We went for four fifty and change. Four fifty and change, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's a ten inch log that's like got rough edges around where Metal. your forearm goes, and it's rusty and shitty. And <laughs> but it's it's a log with history. And right. he's like, and JF, we had two logs. There was a nice log that was twelve inch, and there was that log. And we were like in warm ups, not really sure what we we're gonna do. And he's like, we're using that one. And I was like, oh, that's the history log. So we're all gonna press on this ten inch log that's gonna hurt. That's and definitely I literally died for a while. Yeah, I was black and blue um, just from doing maybe eight total reps on that log um, from warm up to 440. And I was black and blue on the forearms. Just is very uncomfortable log, but I actually enjoyed it to press. Um, but yeah, pretty cool uh, culmination of 16 weeks of this year. And yeah. now we just did a little bit of log this last three weeks. And 400 any day of the week is kind of just normal. Um, I think 440 any day of the week is pretty normal at this point. 
Yeah, I mean, I might need I might need like two three weeks to do a four forty, but yeah, um, I mean, anything if you have three weeks or less, you hit four hundred forty pounds, which is really cool. Um, you know, hell, I, I hope the Arnold UK we'll touch into that later has a max log because they're about to find out. But, sure, I mean, uh, if if without giving anything away, I think if I had to do like anybody watching, especially open class dudes, biggest differences on log from the beginning to log to the end is very very conscious work on the ankles and lat mobility and that's just banded ankle rocks and dumbbell pullovers yeah that's no secrets two three days a week and uh now i have the mobility to do log right like i had the strength before now i have the mobility to do it um yeah it just takes real dedication and months to that stuff and you'll be able to hit positions you couldn't hit before so uh so we are through our favorite training concepts uh i'm really excited about this the favorite competition moments of the year and again oh, yeah. i think i'm gonna let you i think i'm gonna let you start i think we have a few that overlap yeah i have uh, i have four uh and two of the four are from the same show so you really could kind of call it three uh, sure. so really kind of the two just north america's strongest man as a whole conceptually was one of my favorites for you because you know it was a little bit of a story to get even into that show there was quite a bit of networking that, that had to mm-hmm. happen you know for those that don't know like the reality is getting into big shows almost has nothing to do with how good you are. Like it's shocking <laughs> how little it has to do with it. It almost has everything to do with who, you know, uh, especially if you're doing any of the shows in Europe, let's say. Um, so, so for that show, I remember listening to JF Karan on a podcast and he briefly mentioned that he was putting on this show. And I immediately texted him. I was like, he's like, I interviewed him once for bar band years ago. And I was like, Hey, I have a guy who's really strong that you definitely don't know of. But I'm telling you, he's good. I promise you, he doesn't suck. And, and he, funny, he responded. He goes, "Oh, I know exactly who he is. He is good." And he made you a reserve. So it was cool that uh, one, you know, just having the networking. Two, you, he did know who you were, which, and I believe him because that guy's a bit of a savant when it comes to tracking the North American guys. Sure. Uh, and um, it was nice to see you finally can even consider yeah. for something. Dude, like. I, I remember uh, how I found out I got into that show is one of my favorite. Strongman memories to date. I'm sitting in a Chipotle with Ryan on my uh, on my birthday, nice. and uh, JF sends me a French to English Facebook Messenger message. So I'm not entirely sure what he's saying. Right. Uh, <laughs> he goes like, uh, "You are in show, or you or you may be invited to show." And I was like, "What?" And he's like, "Am I?" And I texted him back. I'm like, "Am I in the show?" He's like, "Yes, you are in the show." Bobby pulled out. And I was I freaked out in the middle of a Chipotle, and then Ryan, being Ryan, uh, convinced the Chipotle staff to sing me "Happy Birthday" when that's not something Chipotle does because it's not a restaurant <laughs> like that. Um, but yeah, no. And then we'd already kind of been training for it, and then it was I think we had like eight, ten weeks at that point, probably ten weeks yeah. at that point, and we just yeah. really hammered home. And all the Canadian dudes did their like five shows in that ten weeks, <laughs> as they do. And I actually properly peaked for it, and I'm thankful for it because I mean, it came down to every single rep mattered. End up tying with Wes on that podium. Um, yeah, dude. I mean, one stair less on the power stairs, one position less on anything. I lose that point, and I'm third, or maybe even off the podium. Yeah, like dude, that yeah, that yeah. show is a war. And like, yeah, for those who haven't watched it yet. Go to JF Cron's YouTube and watch it. That show had three or four world strongest man competitors, uh, one of which had podium just two years ago, and and just a bunch of really great guys. And genuinely, one of the most compelling and fun strongman shows of the mm-hmm. whole year. That does not get enough credit that it deserves for really poor reasons, in my opinion. Uh, that it's not covered by some of the bigger media outlets, but it is an incredible show. Yeah, yeah. Like, and if anybody uh, watching is considering doing Rainier. You should, because um, you can sit around and you know maybe go get seventh at Shaw Classic again, yeah. and have no exposure to real pros, or do something like Rainier, get a podium, get up to go to J- uh, JF show that he's putting on up there, and get a chance to compare directly to world strongest man competitors and like big time exactly. pros. It's it's um, you know I that was kind of the route that I did this year. I know it doesn't come with like direct invites and stuff, um, they, like they some of these. Attention. They pay yeah. attention. They pay attention. Like I didn't do anything that gave me direct invites this year, but I'm going to the Arnold this year, right? It just you, we'll, we'll get to that too. But like, yeah, like, we will get to that. Yeah, um, but it's it's an incredible opportunity, and the people putting on those shows up in Canada are doing it right, and they don't get enough exposure. Um, so, 
I guess to transition, uh, my, I was thinking about it, like my favorite part of the year. Um, I know this is kind of a ringer for me, but one of my favorite things from this year is we had three max overhead events <laughs> and we are still undefeated on yes. max overhead. We are uh, undefeated that uh, with an asterisk, I have lost one and it was that max log at nationals a couple years ago. Yeah. Um, no. Nobody cares about now. No, no, dude, I was a kid. I was just a boy. Just a baby boy. I was just a baby. That wasn't my strongman career. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, we had. Uh, Plankers was like, "What the fuck, man?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Plankers just destroyed me. Yeah, and he didn't even know who I was at the time. He doesn't even care. Um, yeah, so uh, Max Dumbbell at the Arnold, uh, Max Log at North Americas, and Max Axel at North American Championship or at America's Strongest Man uh, went undefeated on those. Um, I got a, a, a bit of a point of pride with max overheads and dumbbell events. Yeah. Um, Rob did end my undefeated streak in dumbbell. He did that. And, uh, I think that's okay. I lost to like probably with the best, I'd say probably second best dumbbell presser in the world. Right now? Who, Maybe who, third. Who's better than him right now? Uh, yeah, it's true. Novikov coming off injury, I would say like as the, the depth I mean, of his whole career. I would say Singleton's probably – Singleton could have smoked that series I, too. I would say he's the best for reps. reps. Probably, yeah, yeah. You're probably right. Singleton right now is yeah. as wild as his technique is. It works. I don't think he's the best for Max, but I think he's no, the best for reps. no. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Um, yeah. So that, that that was a big one for me. Um, a little minor one. A big, uh, good uh, memory was the Reach Deadlift weekend. Oh, yeah. You um, want to give a little backstory on that? Yeah. Uh, so the girls, um, Gabby, Aaron, Nez, uh, got sponsored. They had kind of like a group uh, deal with Reach Supplements, a uh, newer supplement company out of Utah. Um, so they did like their discount code together. Um, and Reach, as kind of like a launch weekend thing, did a max deadlift event uh, at a gym down there. And they did a pro am division. And uh, at the time, I wasn't really sure if uh, – I like didn't have any sponsorship, didn't have any connection. Alex like, hey, man, uh, I got this other guy who's pretty good. Like, can he come down and maybe uh, represent the brand? And I just, like, got a plane ticket, like, two days ahead. And I get down there. I didn't really have any information. And the dude goes, hey, you want to do the max deadlift? I was like, sure, man. Uh, <laughs> but, like, we – Strongmen huh? as well, right? Yeah, there was quite a few uh, good strongmen in there. Like, Kevin Ferris did it. Uh, a lot of the guys out of the Sweaty Pig did it. Um, Aaron jumped in. Um, but it was kind of cool memory, like, because it was another thing. Like, I hadn't had a reason to max my deadlift. So I was this guy who, I was like, yeah, I have a big deadlift, but, like, I haven't maxed it. So people ask me what my max is. I'm like, it's 750. Yes. <laughs> right? You and uh, 20 for 8 at OSG? <laughs> yeah, I just, yeah. And then uh, got to pull 855, and I don't think that was the real max of the day, but it was appropriate given we had a real show coming up. Um, and we got to go lift stones with uh, – some some guys that run the I can't remember I, uh, what is the name Stu Squatch, Someone. yeah he, yeah Stu Squatch he runs the uh, Utah Stone Tour, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, forcing Gabby to actually like get dirty for once. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but no, that was that was just a cool uh, cool weekend of the year. I enjoyed that a lot. What's uh, your next one? So my next one was the bus pull, but we already talked about that. So really my, my, and I already talked about the networking. Actually, no, I didn't. That's the third one. So let's call this the second one then. Uh, America's Strongest, uh, at America's Strongest Man, the stone loading series was probably my personal favorite moment of the year for you. Mm -hmm. um, you just handled it well. You just, you, di you did just about every single one perfectly. Except and, the, uh, the light one. The first one. You, you <laughs> the first it. one, I, I tried to like throw it or something. It didn't yeah, work. So stupid. But uh, it, it basically went near perfect. And to one motion, that last stone is fucked up. Like that really was a, that was the hammer and the nail of the weekend for all mm -hmm. that. the moment. The other guys who were in contention, uh, you know, uh, Kearney, Crowder, it was other, the moment that happened, they were like, well, <laughs> like that, that really, rich. we got to do really good at power stairs now. <laughs> yeah. That really kind of ended it. So that was a very fun one to watch. And again, it just kind of ties back to the stone improvements that we've been doing. All mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I think we can, I don't know. You want to talk about the the networking side of stuff, because I because that that event I think was more important than we realized as far as the networking. Um, I think I think it gave, and we get into that. Yeah, I mean, I think it gave permission for the networking to work. Sure, more, you know what I mean. Like it gave you a stamp, if you will. Yeah, and I, I think um, 
I my last uh, favorite part of this year contest wise is kind of two parts. So I had uh, power stairs like basically three times this year, and it was the perfect metaphor for what the year was. Like at the Arnold, I lost by a fraction, the smallest fraction possible. Didn't quite get it done. Like I was doing well, but I didn't get it done. And then in Canada, uh, went against probably the, one of the most challenging sets of power stairs in the world, Ever. and it just tore me up, destroyed me. But it was just enough to do what we needed to do in that show. So I would consider that one more of a win. Yeah. And then uh, we come to Amer- uh, America's Strongest at the end of the year, and I didn't need to win that event, but I did. And it was like come from behind, a one-on-one with Crowder. Honestly, one of my favorite events I've ever done. And it was like uh, the perfect metaphor for the year of just like we were close before, and this year was the year we did the stuff that it yeah. took to get to the actual wins. Yeah. Um, a lot of losing. And we'll get a lot of money. losing, a lot of losing. And after that show, my favorite thing about this year is the amount of people that got behind me to like invite this dude to something. And that, um, yeah, that's my last thing that was my favorite was just the networking. So, so like, yeah. again, like this, this is the thing that maybe people don't realize, like America's Strongest Man did not qualify Lucas for Arnold. None, yeah. North America's Strongest Man did not. Uh, Arnold, what, like all those things were good, and it, it's a track record of like consistency mm. at, at a very high level. But the reality is, people at the top don't really know any of those people competing in those shows. They don't no. really, they don't see that. But they know what a win is. And when you know, literally hundreds of people, <laughs> Jen, <laughs> yeah, Oz, like Slater, Colin Bryce, like hundreds of yeah, people. would I have multiple promoters reach out and be like, "Hey, man, can you have yeah. people stop tagging me?" I see you. I follow you now. You're doing yep. great. Yep. But please stop. Um, that, that was, was one of the coolest people. things. Yeah. That's, that's and, how, thanks, thanks, everybody who's watching this. That's yeah. Really and I know a few people specifically had individual conversations with Jan Todd about getting me to the Arnold. Um, yes. And I can't thank those people enough. And what was important about that stone run, um, that was the one thing that Jan mentioned my name when I talked to her. She's like, that stone run was one of my favorite events I watched this year. You know how much I loved like natural stones and stuff. Yeah. I mean, that's that's her jam. That's what she used to do. Yeah. And like that might have been the event, uh, the single performance that got the invite, right? Yeah. Uh, I don't know what it was specifically that made the final decision, but it all kind of culminated to this Arnold invite that's coming up next year. Um, yeah, I think for people like Slater and Jan who ultimately run the Rogue invites and the Arnold invites is – one thing I do appreciate about them is they they do value stuff like America's Strongest Man and yeah. America's Strongest Woman. Like they value those wins, and, and that's how, uh, frankly, that's how Angelica got an invite, right? She sure. won America's yeah. Strongest Woman, and 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 Angelica also melee that stone, natural stone. <laughs> yes, she did. Like, um, like was she? I'm gonna tell you something right now. This is a little side tangent. I don't care if Victoria Long's there. I don't care if Inez Casquillo's there. I don't care if Olga's there. If that you put that same stone run together again with Angelica, she beats all of them. She yeah. Dish. Her ability to just one motion shit it's from the ground. It just yeets. <laughs> yeah, like, I, uh, what's the, I used to have a coach that used to say the difference between being strong and being sturdy. Okay. Angelica yeah. is sturdy. He's sturdy. Like, as hell. like that's sturdy. You know, it's like it, anybody can carry, uh, you know, farmers, but can they yeah. carry like, the thing on the shoulder, the odd weight, and like yeah. in something to their side, right. and just go. That's what she can do. Like she's yeah. just unbelievable yeah. strong that way. Yeah. So back to them, like you know, it's nice that there's something like that's valid. Because let me tell you something right now. I'm just going to tie into things that were that I want to have for the year. But like that sets that invite from them, and what's going to happen mm-hmm. soon, a couple, you know, after we get to our UK is going to set up your whole 2024. Yeah, it needs to. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I wanted to cover that. I had a couple, I guess, quote unquote, low points of the year or things. Low we lights. Wish, low lights. Stuff the, we wish the, we would have done. The dim lights. Why, why I'm a failure. <laughs> <laughs> why? Uh, yeah. And we'll end with goals and happy things for 2024. Um, but my uh, my first low point of the year is I never got my 300 dumbbell. Um, I feel so bad for you. I'm sorry. Yeah, I know. It doesn't it doesn't matter. It really on the grand scheme of things doesn't matter. No, um, no, it's it's cool, but I like that that's the number that makes you sad. Like everyone's like, I just want 220, man. Like Yeah. <laughs> I want 300, me and four or five other people in the world. 
Right. Um, but yeah, I, it's it's one of those things like I would post dumbbell videos and people would be like in the comments, just do 300 already. I was like, I'm trying, dude. <laughs> <It's hard. laughs> and then I tried it uh, event like five at the Arnold. No, and, no it was event six. Uh, no, we had Ukrainian and uh, power stairs after that. So it was five. Oh, right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But it, yeah, like I just didn't, I uh, I just made a mistake during the different drive and lost it out to the side. Um, it's one of those where it's like, yeah, it's probably there. It's nice yeah. to say I could probably do a 300 of it, but I never, I've never gotten it. Um, not that that matters. It didn't affect the year at all. Um, and we have a, for being a good judge and not giving it to you. Yes. Yes. I think I have it here actually. And, Wait, pull, uh, up, pull up for the people. Let me pull up uh, me missing the hell out of a 300 dumbbell. Uh, I mean, it was closer than, and this was kind of for no reason. I already had the show won. Oh, yeah, already, already did, won the event. Yeah, we were doing I already it. won the event. I was like, Alec, can I do 300? And you just said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we look, I made him load it up, took five minutes off to do this. God damn it. <laughs> oh, uh, I didn't realize who's, it cut there. Who's not filming there? I don't oh, know. The person needs to get a kick in the chest. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I uh, I just lost it out to the side, and uh, that would be some early arm pressing. <laughs> yes, it the was. You that I had in training. Weird, it got worse when it got heavier. <laughs> don't early arm press, kids. Early arm press, you lose it out to the right, and you don't get your three hundred pound dumbbell. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right. What was uh, your first low light of the year? I only have one. You only have one. I only have one I'm born. So the thing is, my low light is actually kind of a highlight because, you know, I'm a little optimistic. All right. Well, that's pretty dumb. So it is. Uh, (laughs) So, no, it's essentially because it took me basically the whole year to be able to do it. And I hated that it took me the whole year. So that's why it was a low light for me. So, and it's just purely from a coaching position. Uh, Having to figure out how to teach you to push through the wall that took me, no, basically took me 364 days. Yeah, it, it was a lot of work because even at Arnold, um, at um, what did we do after Arnold? What was after that? North North America's, um, you still hadn't got it. Like it still wasn't there yet. The mm. I hadn't conveyed to you how to t- how to push through that. You know, runners will call it the wall, or yeah. you know that that feeling in your chest when like panic is ensuing. Mm. Yeah. And, that, and that took a long time and obviously it came it came more naturally as you got stronger which is good but even then you can see some of the strongest people in the world we've seen this before where you you see the moment where they quit or they slow down just because mm-hmm. like we, you could, especially if you're really in tune with sports or let's say the sports specific you could see it um and it wasn't until america's strongest man that you you yeah. finally but, pushed through a wall yeah i think that the best one's like watching someone do a stone series you yes. know where the next stone's not going to go yeah. It's on their face. It's like, and yeah, in the past, I think I would have this moment of rational thought of like, I need to pace for this portion right. to finish the event. And it's like, at the end of the day, what you just did is you took an event that could have taken 25 seconds and you made it 40 seconds of exertion. It's actually harder. Yeah. Uh, it could pretend or potentially could be harder. Right. And then right. Um, that mentality of like, you don't need that one breath. Like, no, it's just, it's essentially what you ended up learning over the year. And I, obviously I'm going to say I had a hand in helping at least uh, is, you know, not letting your feelings dic- dictate the outcomes. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. and I think one of the things I said to you uh, right before you did your power stairs was don't allow yourself to feel work so consistently and so hard intently during this event that you do not allow yourself to feel during it. Cause the moment yeah. you feelings enter the mind during an event, it's over. Like, it doesn't matter how strong good you are. So that was, that was the, it's a low for me because it took me a fucking year to try to help develop. <laughs> that. But it's also a high because you did like, you now yeah, you, yeah, know, yeah. you know how to push even, even in the bus pool that you won by nine seconds, you slowed down in your head. The last five. Oh yeah. Seconds. Yeah. I did. I like did. You could have done that in 38 seconds. It didn't need 40 seconds. I know. So, like, and I know <laughs> that, but, but, but you've then figured out and you, know, you really displayed that on the stones and on the power stairs at America's and, you know, going into the Arnold UK, mm-hmm. I can't wait to see it even further. Cause now it's gonna be at another level. Yeah. And it's, it's, uh, that is interesting when you take it into the context of traditional Arnold events yeah. that potentially have a two minute time cap, yeah. right? Like, cause there is more planned strategic rest in those events 
But it's it's going to be interesting because it's it's a the Arnold's almost a different sport yeah. than most strongmen. It, yes. uh, I'm I'm curious. They need to give us those damn events. They still um, haven't given the UK specifically. No. Um, so yeah, we'll see. Um, low points for me. Um, I don't really care about the finger thing. I messed up my finger training arm over arm. That's not why I still suck at arm over arm. No, you just suck at it. I just suck at arm over arm. Um, but my hand is still messed up. Like it's weird that the, this little thing of just nicking my finger on the board that I prop my feet against on one training session in February. And now it is a year the next, the next January yes. and my fingers still messed up. Yes. Um, and my grip is fine, but it's not at a hundred percent on that hand, yes. um, which freaks me out with stuff like a frame coming up maybe, but um, yeah, be I'll be fine. Um, but my, fine. my last low point of the year is kind of in the same realm as my 300 dumbbell. Didn't get the max axle record. Uh, didn't get the American record at America's Strongest Man, and it wasn't um, your fault. I, you, I know you. I'd love to say that. I'm saying, but it. at the end of the day, I didn't get it. It is. It, it was. A, I would say it was due to a uh, equipment mishap. Horrific planning by the organizers is a yes. better way to put it. Yes. Uh, yeah, it's tough. Um, love them. I'm so grateful that they do what they do. However, horrific. Yes. Planning. But for so for context, um, as we were climbing, we were using those really cool big tires. Um, had a great custom made axle um, that um, axle by James. Yeah, Hill. which we're still going to buy, I think. Yeah. Yes, we still need to do that. Um, but we were going up, and at 440, we they added a second set of tires, and there was change plates in between the two tires. Um, Rob said that when he did his 440, he felt it shift, meaning those plates were free floating between the two tires. Right. Um, and uh, I think it was Taylor draw or Taylor going, I always say Taylor draw because of Instagram. Uh, yes. He's sitting on the side and he's like, aren't those plates free floating? So I was like, Oh yeah, good point. So we're like, Hey guys, can you add a clip inside uh, to hold those plates together? Which is ultimately the thing that screwed up the record yes. because it was so tight that the plates didn't allow the tires to then turn. So on a jump from 440 to 469, we went from a non-fixed axle to a fixed axle. <laughs> and in my opinion, even that, sure, it sucked. The fixed really did suck. But what really, really grinded my gears, to be, truth be told, was that jump was way too in excess of what that record was simply mm -hmm. because they didn't plan on bringing the actual weights needed. They didn't sure. have it, so they just or put it. it was just trust that the iron plates were what they were. I don't know. I, I, I don't, don't know. know. It, it's whatever it ended up being. Whatever it, it is, it's, it was an indication yeah. of not being planned, which is what bothered yeah. me. And honestly, the jump the, took 20 minutes for them to yeah. set up. Yeah. And honestly, the only reason I took 469 instead of insisting, hey guys, let's drop that at least five pounds, because yeah. the record was only 458 or 459. Right. 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 Like I just I just want to chip the record. I don't need to beat it by 10 pounds on a 30 pound jump. Um, but it had already taken 15, 20 minutes. And me and Rob had this moment where we're like, screw it. It's, it. it's yeah, loaded. It's we're getting cold. This ultimately doesn't matter for the yeah. contest. Um, at most, me and Rob were fighting for one point. But I wanted the record. And Rob reluctantly went for it as well. Yeah, <laughs> I, know, want I know he didn't really want to, but he gave it a crack. And, dude, I think we were both peaked for that kind of a press totally. if we would have cleaned it. Um, and who knows I, if we would have cleaned it. If the standard had been the same the whole way through, you both would have hit that press. I do. I believe that too. Yeah. His 440 was not that hard. My 440, that was the easiest shit in the world. I personally like, think you had a bigger press in you that day, but Rob would have absolutely at minimum shared the American record. Oh yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. Cause after that, I mean, who knows if it was worth it to go up again. I'm kind of an idiot and would have <laughs> wanted to. Oh yeah. I was, I, I think I did say this. I did say the statement to Dion is like, a little bit of me wants to try 500 if I hit this. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the haters of the world would be like, it's not fixed. That doesn't count. And I'd be like, I don't care. I have 500 pounds and you don't. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that side quest is still going to happen at some point. But it's big, bu big bum or big miss for the year. It's um, uh, I guess to end, I want to end with the goals. So was there anything in the column of things we wish we did differently? I know you, you said you had one. Yeah, just the one for me. And honestly, the only thing that I wish we had did differently, and this really kind of uh, lends towards more of the first six months of the year, was just improve your quality of sleep and your off-season discipline sooner. 
Sure. That's something that's something that could have been improved. And you know, that being said, you opened a gym, which yeah. took out a <laughs> stupid chunk of our time. Like you lost 12 weeks of training because of that. Yeah, like um, actually 16. But yeah, the, the day we got back from North America is I got the keys, and I don't think I did a real training week until oh, weeks. yeah, almost almost uh, mid-October. Yeah, it was like eleven to twelve weeks out from OSG is when you actually started working <laughs> out again. Yeah. So I would say like increasing your off season discipline, regardless of life circumstances and just more importantly, quality of sleep is something that I, I looking back, all right, that should have been more of a primary focus. Yep, for sure. And it's, and in these last in, since we got kind of done quote unquote with the remodel, the sleep's improved and like, we're back to that of like, okay, we can get three to 5% out of an event during right. like, we're, we're back to where we should be. And I think it can still be better than it is. So yeah, no, that's a good point. Like that, that recovery and treating strongman like it's my job. Yeah, because it is. Probably the, it's probably yeah, it is, and it, it's it's the biggest change for twenty twenty four. Is like it needs to. I have this habit of scheduling things around my work. Right. Oh, at the gym, and it needs to be everything is scheduled around my strongman. Right. I could still be highly successful at the gym and get things yeah. done. But I need to accept that, like, there is a normal amount of work hours and I just need to go home. Um, yeah. And, and like, that's, that's, that's going to be the biggest change. Yeah. With your goals, like, yeah. number one now is strongman. Yeah. 100%. Um, so you said the word goals for 2024. What are, what do you yeah. got? Oh, man. See, I'll start off here. Um, yeah. I'll start off swinging, uh, hitting podium at the Arnold UK. Yeah. We're going to do that. That's I think we can do the that. Thing that I am, you know, this is something that I don't know. I, coaches really don't talk about that much, honestly. And I think it's because they feel as though they might alienate some of their other athletes. But there are certain times in your career where, like, you're really motivated about something, right? Like, a couple of things last year was, um, for me, I was like, I really need to make sure this happens, was, like, helping Jamie Navarro get a pro card, which I fucking failed. She got fourth. Um, uh, Inez's log world record. I wanted to stamp out the previous record by kilos like not even sure not like you know there are certain things when you're coaching you're like i'm gonna do this as best as i can I, at the end of the day like it's the athlete who's out there but i'm gonna do everything i can and one of those things for me that's like my one of my biggest focuses this year outside of um uh two other athletes doing something in particular is getting on that goddamn podium with you like that's yeah. something that i think about all day Every day, yeah. thinking about yeah. it, we got to figure that out. The ways that we have to train, the ways in which I want to approach it mentally for you and myself. Um, you know, I'm constantly looking at weights and and different charts, and I'm like I actually read. Uh, I'm talking to a few old coach friends of mine about certain training modalities. I've been mm -hmm. playing. Too. Like I'm just I'm in it for that one. Like I want uh, that for the team. Like I want that that goddamn podium spot. So. Big goal for that is Arnold UK podium. You know, I, I know who's going to be there. I know it's, you know, the guys are there. Thor, Hooper, Mar not Martinez. Yeah. And I, don't know. I, I think what's – everyone's like, oh, it's some of the best – Ohio and UK is like the best lineups ever put together. And, it you know, there's a good argument for that to be said. But I think that in that lies an opportunity yeah. where everyone is incredible. The margins are going to be so small in each event. So you could see these guys who are incredible do incredible and get sixth, right? Right. right. If you chip ahead and get a fifth on that person in that event, like this is the lineup where you could you could win the show on third, fourths, and fifths. Yeah, because everyone is everyone is going to have third, fourths, fifths, and sixths because everyone's so good, right? Yes. Like it's not the Arnold where it's a one on one between Thor sure. and Mateus sure. anymore. It's just that's not what it is. Um, so it's weird. It's, it's, um, well, the thing is, you, we think that, most yeah, people, I no, and, 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 and you know, and in some sense, I think guys like, I think Hooper thinks he's going to run away with it, yeah. uh, which he still very well could, and he's, he's, he's that fucking, he's that guy, right? He is a motherfucker. At this point, he is that guy. Um, uh, Tom could run away with it, like, depend on the event, like. Yeah. Thor is Thor. He's still yeah. Thor. Like you can see you know, it when he like sets down that frame in his training videos right now. Yeah. There's there's some bit of that crazy person that's still right here. Like he wants to win this show. Yeah. yeah and I know, you know, some people might hear what I'm saying and what mostly what I'm saying and 
maybe a little bit what you're saying and be like, oh, well, you know, listen, there's levels to this game. It's your first time there. Don't have crazy expectations. Just enjoy the experience, which there's a lot of truth to that. Like, there's, there's actually there's a bunch of truth. And I, could, to that. I could have a great show and get seventh. Right. But also, listen, I didn't fucking get here four years into this career thinking I'm just here to have a good time. Like, mm. it's not why you're here. I'm here. Like, I very much want people to know, like, guess what? Your favorite strongman, he could lose to someone you don't know. Because yeah. there are guys out there, if you put the right set of events in, they will beat the best in the world. And you know who's a great example of that? Um, uh, uh, two guys, but the first one that comes to mind is uh, Lalas. Sure. No, one, no one in their right mind thought Lalas was going to win the Arnold at his first one ever, yeah. beating Thor, Brian Shaw. I think Zadrunas may or may not have been there. That I don't year. think he was in that one. Pointed like freaks. And here yeah. comes five foot ten Lalas, weighing two eighty five maybe 300 and just spanks these guys in all static events basically that yeah. I think that, that arnold was like only five events it was four it was four events it was and four events which is like almost not a show it was weird and two of, of them were maxis <laughs> yeah basically. and but like yeah it's um man the arnold is a weird one like you could have one event bad and you're out you're done your weekend is done um yeah no i'm that's that's my number one like, and it's weird to look at this upcoming year because I don't have a ton of goals beyond that because that weekend could determine a lot of the following invites. I mean, yeah. I do. I, my last two is I'm going back to North America's and I want to win. Um, I really want to win. And it's not like, oh, Trey's gone now. So now I can win. Right. No, it's I want to win regardless of who comes. Right. Like um, that is the I think the hardest show on this continent aside from strongest man on earth it is the it, it is honestly man depending on the events i put that show and strongest man in the world the hardest shows in the world there, they could be yeah i mean under- i'm sure there's some horrible in my opinion winning shows north that would destroy is, us, but yeah yeah maybe <laughs> but, i would just like in my opinion winning north america's strongest man is way more impressive than winning europe's strongest man it might be yeah hard. dude yeah europe so i did i did five events that are all like 330 pound sandbags and like the same you know it's just it's the same like it's just it's and no 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 shade but it just goes to show you it's not it's not a two-day outdoor eight event show with like rusty equipment that the promoter's literally laughing at you because it's so heavy right like (laughs) like jf finds it funny how hard the show is yeah um yeah so winning north america's and regardless of schedule uh the only thing that would keep me away from going back to America's Strongest Man would be if uh, I s- somehow get an invite to Rogue and it's overlapping, which yeah, my last- Arnold UK is in the same atm- or same realm, like same set of promoters. It's all Rogue. I mean, yeah. if I do well at the Arnold UK, the most likely invite to come from it would be Rogue. Um, but I do want to go back to America's Strongest Man. Yeah. And, and the, the goal is to do those things. Like obviously like, you know, who, who doesn't want to, I don't want, who, who wants to lose a title? More importantly, who wants to give up all that money? But uh, really, my second one for you is really getting an invite to Rogue Invitational, which yeah. I believe, podium or not, I believe your your performance at Arnold UK will do that for you. I think I think that will fit you into mm-hmm. that spot. It's possible. If you win, if you do top four, especially, I think they'll give you a Rogue Invitational invite because it, against the crowd that you'd have to do it against is unbelievable. Yeah. Um, and really my third, and that's kind of just a fast second one, but really my third one and probably my, my most important one, and I'll get into why, which I think some people will be surprised, save the body. This is this is the time, and I've seen this, I've seen this time and time again, where guys get exactly where you are. They finally get a crack into the international scene. They do well. Let's say they go to a really big one, like you're about to, the Arnold. And let's say they do mm-hmm. really well. Maybe they get on podium, maybe they take fourth, something, sure. great, something great. And then they do a million shows, and destroy their progress and then they get hurt i've seen this so many times so what i'm going to say is after this is after the arnold i only plan on you doing at most two more shows in the year so the third goal is written as save the body like and i'll be honest if it's an invite to world strongest man i'm still probably going to suggest that you don't do it i'm still probably going to suggest it because so many people fall into that trap, man, where they fall into that loop of like, well, I guess I'm doing six shows a year now. It's like, for what? Where? How are you going to improve? At what mm. point are you training your body? What, more importantly, at what point are you saving your body? You know, I yeah. don't want to get to the point where 
And we see this with really successful strongmen. I don't want to get to the point because you did so many fucking shows that you have these nagging lifelong injuries that you have to take a year off, right? Rehab, come back sure. for a year, crush, and take a whole year. Like, that's not a career that I want for you. No, no, no. And no. I, I don't, it, it's lame. God, a world turning down worlds would be one of the hardest things. And yeah. it would be really hard. I guess I don't, I, 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 that's I, one where I might, I actually, I'm not saying might, I would disagree with you on that's if that, nice. if that invite came because with the schedule of things, like it would be, you do the Arnold and it's like, hey, five, six weeks later, we're doing World's Strongest Man. And that's uh, what it is. It is five, six weeks after. It might even be less than that. What, what, it might even be less. Than, no, it's, it's the same weekend as Rainier. So it's the first weekend in May. Yeah. So um, oops, dumb scheduling by me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah so, but no, I, I'm with you. I'd rather put all our eggs into two or three shows. Yeah. And make it count. Um, so many people disagree with me with that. So many people follow, follow the method of like, oh, we'll just show up and just be ready. It's like, sure, you can. And you know, you'll probably be fine. But even guys like Hooper this year, who does everything and basically wins everything, that dude hurt himself this year. You know, mm -hmm. does he act like it? No. Does he perform like it? Nobody did. He tore his hamstring and he messed up something. I want to say it might have been his lower back just a little bit. And I know it doesn't sound like much because he ended the year with great successes and he's clearly fine. He's doing all these fun YouTube content videos. But let me tell you something. He's in his 20s. That shit doesn't last forever. You, you can't yeah. tear a hamstring and strain a QL into your 30s and keep going. And like, oh, I'm fine. I'll be fine six weeks. Like, no, you won't be fine. No, you won't be fine. And that's, no. that's why you retire at 34. 35 like that's not and that's not what i want i want you to retire at 44 and, and still be crushing so for me it's just save the fucking body that's the yeah. third goal here no yeah i'm with you on that i think that's um yeah it's 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 weird because this is like the year where we're going to get opportunities to do things that we didn't think were realistic yeah and well, we have to we i know i know but like i know but we have to approach them and accept or deny and be very realistic yeah. what the body's capable of and this is i mean the strength levels are reaching a point where like confidence is all-time high yeah but have to be all-time most realistic yeah dude. um yeah because it's like i'm strong enough but i'm also strong enough to really really hurt myself yeah uh, <laughs> i mean doing america's on a whim like i had that bicep tweak that like yeah thank god that wasn't anything worse yeah i mean but like, like that was a great thing we did it worked out but that tweak took you out of osg it did. Right. It did. And you know what? Going into OSG could have been, could have changed the entire schedule this next year. Could have had a Giants invite guaranteed. Could have had a Worlds invite guaranteed. I mean, and now that's not on the table. So the next year is kind of a question mark now. And it's because we accepted a show last minute. <laughs> and you know what? I wouldn't change it, honestly. No, I wouldn't either because uh, that money is coming into my account on Friday. Into, so <laughs> I actually think the circuit you're getting into, yeah, your account's way happier to it. I think the circuit you're getting into is. A way better route because I view this like uh, I view this like an MMA coach. You know, you don't you don't want to throw your fighter into the fucking UFC day one, even, even if it's no. a choice. You know I mean, like you have to build this guy. You have to get those little wins, those little like little losses to learn lessons, and you build slowly. So by the time you get to the big show, dude, you're ready. You're ready to win yep. a title, right? Like so many dudes will throw themselves into the shark's den, the lion's den, rather way too fast and then we see and then you, you kind of see it in in again this is no like shade to any of these guys but like for example a guy like evan singleton dude he was so big and so powerful so fast that he tore both biceps within the first year and a half of his career right like and that's not because he was dumb or anything but like he was doing such strong things at big shows i would say maybe even too quickly and his body yeah. was whole and now he's okay he's fine like he's i think he's the second most giant I, will ever yeah i know he's got like, that could have been avoided. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and I mean, doing... you know, it's, it's those hard fought lessons, like, and yeah. we, we want to avoid a few of them. Um, so yeah, I think uh, that's a good place to wrap up. Um, so second edition of Luke's and Alex front porch, wrapping it up, uh, do all those things, like subscribe, share, um, still trying to grow this thing. I have a technique tips video coming out here soon as well. I'm nice. probably just going to put this one out first. Um, I'm going to do some deep dives uh, into technique probably once every couple of weeks. Uh, this first one is going to be on the axle clean technique uh, and why your favorite pro strongman sucks at it. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we'll be looking for that. Uh, but uh, yeah, thanks guys. Uh, Thank we you. Really appreciate the support.